Joining us now is Florida Republican Representative Maria Salazar. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Of course, you're adjourned at this point yeah. until tomorrow afternoon, and after three ballots, you still have no Speaker of the House. It's been nearly a century since this last happened in this country. You voted for Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. Yeah. Do you see any of those no yeah. votes changing by the time this opens back up tomorrow? Well, in reality, like you said, is the first time in 100 years, and my concern tonight is that we are playing with fire, we meaning the Republicans. Why? Because the American people put us in the majority. Kevin McCarthy, two years ago, raised his hand and said, hey, I want to be speaker. So he put together working groups. He put together something called the Commitment to America. He went around the country, he raised funds, and he put us in the majority. Not the large majority that he was expecting, but we are in the majority. Florida and New York made this party to be the majority in the House of Representatives. Now you have 20 colleagues or 17 people that we respect, Jim Jordan and the rest. I have spoken with many of them because you know I was a journalist so I love to talk and see what's the what's the other side of the story and the reality is that two years ago three years ago any of them could have raised their hand and say hey I want to be speaker so if you do then you go out and you raise money and you and you help other candidates to make it into the majority that that did not happen What's my concern? My concern is that I come from a district that is composed of Cubans, Venezuelan, Nicaraguans, immigrants that love the American exceptionality. And my concern is that the socialists, those youth, 66% of our youth in many different uh, instances have said in polls that they believe that socialism is a good system. They may say that socialist policies may be good, but not socialism. And why do I say that? Because I am the daughter of political refugees. So my concern is that we, the Republicans, we're playing games, we're wasting time, and we're not sending the right message to those people who elected us, that we are here to do their business, seal the border, stop the fentanyl, don't do away with the inflation, lower gas prices, and bring back the glory to this country. That is the real threat. No who's going to be speaker and this 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 a merry-go-round that we're going right now that I think is not good for us or for the country do you have any sense those people who are kind of aligning in this never McCarthy group why they have a, a problem with him well, they say that because he voted uh, to spend more money and because whatever. I mean, it's very hard to be in this job, I assure you. Like I said, I was a journalist for 35 years, and I thought that being on television was hard. Oh, no. This is harder. So he put us in the majority. It's not that I am his best friend, but I think we got to be fair. And if 90% of the conference, of the GOP members of the House of Representatives, want that guy, then we should go with him. It's like in a marriage. Do you really believe that you are going to be in accordance with your husband 100% of the time? No, right? But that doesn't mean that you're going to divorce the guy. So why are we going around this? This is My fear is that we're squandering our political capital, the capital that the American people gave us back in November. What can you tell us about the mood and the energy on, on the House floor at this point? Well, the Dems are laughing, and they're saying, ha, 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 you guys got not get it together. Well, you know, unfortunately, they are right, and I don't like it, because we, the Republicans, we don't have any socialists. We may have people that don't think alike, but on the other side, unfortunately, you, unfortunately, you have the Democratic Socialists. For us and for my district, anything that sounds or smells socialism is really bad. It's misery, it's oppression, and at the end, it's exile. And it's the end of the American exceptionality. We may not be perfect, but we still have got the best system on Earth. And I do not want that system to be destroyed or to be changed. I want it to be remodeled or to be improved, but not what we're seeing in the last two years with the Biden administration. Don't you see what's happening on the border? Don't you see the fentanyl? How many hundreds of thousands of people dying in the last two years? Look what's happening with inflation. We had a fantastic economy three years ago, but 
Look what we're doing. We, the Republicans, look where we're spending our time the 3rd of January. We should wake up and smell the votes and smell the coffee and see that the whole country, for all Americans, for Democrats, for Republicans, and for independents, it's a risk. And it's our job in the Republican conference, in, in the House of Representatives, to bring the, uh, the country forward once again. That's why we were elected. Congresswoman, I want to kind of play off of your analogy of the, 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 the marriage, right? You said, you know, you don't divorce the guy because you guys don't agree all the time. But, but really, this is about making sure the wedding happens. And I'm wondering if there is a prenup or, or some kind of agreement that you see on the horizon <laughs> that there's actually going to be well, a, a ceremony. You know, it's, and I agree with what you're saying. And I think that we should have talked about the prenuptial months ago when we knew that Kevin was going to be or he was poised to be the speaker. And I think that the conference should have come together or those within the conference that did not agree with his job. I repeat, two years ago, he raised his hand or even three years ago in 2018 when I ran the first time, he had raised his hand and he wanted to be speaker. What a great job. Oh my God, how hard. Well, you know, be careful what you wish for. So he wanted to be speaker. He went around, he raised the money, he put us in the majority, he created working groups, he, he, then he created the, this big document called commitment with America. He went to the party. He went to he went to the to the other members of the party to ask for advice. I think the guy did the most he could do. He's not God, but he did the most. And I repeat, he's not my friend, but I think fair it's fair. And if 90% of the conference agrees with one guy, then let's go for let's go vote for him and let's let's move forward and bring this country back to its glory. Because right now, it's not. And socialism is creeping in. Uh, last question, Congresswoman. What does this tell us about the vision in your party and how this could impact the next two years? Well, it, it, I think it's a very good question, and right now, I do not have that answer. I would like that vision to be more united, to have just one road, which is to what I just told you, bring the economy back to where it was three years ago, and bring back the civil society to understand through media and academia that socialism, democratic socialism, any way you want to call it, is not good for our youth or for our people. You know, I always say the same thing because I do represent those people. 65 years ago, the Cubans went through the same democratic and political experiment. We don't like the system. Let's try some socialism. Look where they're at now. Socialism and let's go to the Venezuelans. 20 years ago, the Venezuelans said, we don't like the system. We have democracy. Nah, let's try democratic socialism. Look where they are. Oh, it will never happen in America? Really? That's exactly what the Venezuelans said 22 years ago. So since I am the daughter of political refugees, I feel that fire and I fear it. Feel it and fear it. Okay, one more. I, I know I said that was my last. This is my, my last promise. Uh, you know, people say that the definition of insanity is doing the same Let's thing again and you again. Put the, that you put, yeah, the, you put the whole segment. You're not going to cut, right, or edit. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it, Congresswoman. Good. You know, people Good. say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. Is that where we are now? You guys just are going to keep voting and voting and voting and, and expecting a, a different outcome? I mean, how does this ultimately resolve itself? Because the the people who are well, the, the I, never McCarthy people, where do they go in all of this? Well, I think that's a very good question. And I go around the floor myself as a journalist, once a journalist, always a journalist. And I ask the members who have been here longer than I have because this is my second term. And everyone tells me the same thing. We don't know, we don't know. This has never happened in 100 years. But I do know that it's still the best system. I do know that we still have the best democratic process on, on, on earth. So how, how does this end? No one really knows. But I do believe that we all that we should all sit in one big room and come to a conclusion and for the next round to be the final one. That has to be decided collectively, not by only 20 members. Congresswoman Maria Salazar from Florida, we thank you so much for your time and insight. Sure. Perhaps of we'll course. see you again tomorrow. Okay, sure. <laughs> of course, of course, anytime. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.